I also want to thank Marcus Hammond from Eulenia for his generous support. I can give you Singapore dollars, Hong Kong dollars. The whole financial system is in need of radical reform. The capital expenditure will be in Asia. The bulk of the operating costs will be in Asia. I'm simply not prepared to do this with dollars. There are simple rules that I like to adhere to. I didn't go to Harrow or Eton. I wasn't Oxford or Cambridge. I don't like that. It's not really how I like to do business. No one saves us but ourselves. There are pharmaceutical companies patenting drugs but making them so expensive the poor cannot possibly afford them. It's from the sayings of Buddha. I don't do that. I give them hope. It's just that I get to make the decisions. He said it was like a wave of ecstasy that filled him from head to toe. That's how it feels. How many girls you kill? I don't know. Yes, money can buy happiness. Well, we're seeing that, of course, uh, it, it's been, you know, rather part of the zeitgeist of the past few years when you know, uh, Woody Allen and various uh, directors, actors, uh, Mel Gibson, you know, with these many people. Every time you get to something really juicy, uh, <laughs> the system can't take it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, were about, you were just talking about... Uh, about the art versus the artist and the new sort of the new normal in that yes and i think this is something that we don't really yet know how to deal with um what if somebody is a horrible person but produces something of great cultural or artistic value um i mean i've always had a theory that if that somebody who may be a, a great actor, um, say Kevin Spacey, although right. I, I don't think he's faced criminal charges, but he's obviously not going to get cast in anything very soon. I actually think there might be an alternative approach, which is rather than, you know, have to uh, be blacklisted or go to jail, maybe instead they should be forced to make more films. Uh, that's their public service, is to use their talents to redeem themselves. Well, I think that uh, many people are creative geniuses because of their flaws. This is the problem, you see, isn't it? Because, because they have things driving them, they, 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 sort of demons and, or, or whatever. And, um, um, and if we started to, um, if we started to uh, 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 blacklist everybody we suspected of being evil, or, I mean, we're going to start getting rid of, you know, James Barry or Lewis Carroll or something. And then, uh, uh, in the end, we'll end up with art that is all sort of neutral, perhaps, or all flat. I don't know. Um, do you think that... I, I wonder if that is true, though. We, there is obviously a, a sort of almost a romantic vision of the suffering, struggling, flawed... Uh, genius uh, who 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 uh, creates great things but has a, a totally dark part to himself. Um, I'm sure equally there must be some great musicians, composers, artists, much like both of us, who are perfectly <laughs> normal, rational uh, people who have uh, no strange flaws to us whatsoever. So I, I don't uh, want to feel that I'm a failure because I'm too normal. Well, uh, <laughs> well, well, the thing is that I think there are two sides to this because, because you know, as, as uh, the former president of the Horror Writers Association, I've known a lot of horror writers, very good ones. And one of the questions most of them get asked is, how can you write this stuff? You must, there must be something wrong with you. Yes. And most of, and there are a few of the exceptions, but most of the ones I've met, have been the most well-adjusted normal people I've ever run across. And, uh, and maybe that's because they get it all out of their system. Yes. 
And perhaps, as you say, people with these problems should get it all out of their system by making more films or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, well, to echo what you just said, I mean, my um, two of my past films were ghost stories or horror films. Yes. So I did many tours of different uh, genre film festivals. And I, I had a, I sort of discovered always the more delightful and friendly the director was. Right. And, and, and yet when I went to sort of more artistic film festivals where somebody had made a sensitive drama uh, about uh, somebody struggling to come to terms with their identity, they were usually assholes. <laughs> I see. So you can probably predict what kind of film somebody's going to make by looking at their personality. If they're very I think so. jolly and fun to be with, or and nice and generous <laughs> and compassionate, probably the most twisted horror film you could imagine. And, and if, they, if it's a gentle family film full of Christian values, they're probably evil. <laughs> I... I... I would go along with that. That's my prediction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. But we hadn't, sorry, we never got to the point of the story, which was that I had discovered, uh, you know, uh, Gesualdo right. and couldn't find any, um, there, there were remarkably few recordings, decent recordings done of this. And I, I remember I Facebooked you and messengered you and said, do you know of any recordings of Gesualdo? And funnily enough, I think by coincidence, you had been listening to or had even had thoughts about performing Gesualdo. And so it was a very happy coincidence. And thankfully, you, uh, I think it was the Calliope Choir uh, you you rehearsed and uh, and recorded I think three or four right. uh, of the of the pieces. So was, uh, and they worked wonderfully in the film. So again, thank you for that. Oh, it was my it was always my ambition to do Jesualdo's work in Thailand, but I never had an excuse. <laughs> and when you contacted me, I thought, well, let's do one or two of them. My, they are devilishly devilishly hard to perform these pieces I, it, and um, eventually uh, sort of inspired by your film we put on an all we, we put on an all Gesualdo evening yes and uh, I don't know there, there were not that many people there but they certainly were aff affected by it I think um, yes um, no, absolutely I mean it was certainly the first time I'm sure that any of his work had been performed in Thailand. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, and I doubt anywhere else in Southeast Asia. Oh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, yes. Interestingly, e even the Italians were surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, mm. somebody from the Italian embassy told me that they actually had to look Gesualdo up. <laughs> so, um, so um, you know, as, as a musician, um, one of the things you learn is that Jesualdo was, a, was an outlandish sort of fringe composer, but you never actually study his music. I mean, it's just, it's just right. always a footnote or in passing. Uh, oh, uh, these are the rules uh, of, of music of the Renaissance, except Jesualdo. <laughs> it's like a little footnote. But this is, but Jesualdo wasn't, you know. It's all right. So, so that alone is something that made one want to do his work, you know, of course. Um, but uh, well, I I just remember being very glad when having having researched the character and the history exactly as you told to play the music and find that it did actually work for the film. Right. It would have been it awful. Work. Waltz, it would have not uh, worked at all. You know, yeah, the scene where your protagonist uh, plays Gesualdo is ch chilling. It is really chilling. <laughs> and, uh, and I don't think any other composer would have worked in quite the same way. Interesting. We, I, I wanted it to have some impact, so I wanted to have these 
enormous and rather strangely shaped uh, loudspeakers. Right. And uh, and I couldn't find any real loudspeakers suitably sort of large and strange. Um, so I went to um, where is the same uh, the strange place uh, Ban Moor, where they sell all the, the the components of loudspeakers and bought these great big cones, and had somebody build these very strange sort of uh, look like almost a figure of eight speaker. And they feature in the scene. And somebody, after they saw it, got in touch with me. And they really wanted to know where they could buy these speakers because they wanted them in their room. And I had to tell them that, no, they didn't work at all. They were just made out of uh, polystyrene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, but I, I couldn't really go without asking you about the thing you're working on now because um, after two extremely effective and, as I say, relentless, terrifying films. You're now doing something rather <laughs> sweet. Oh, not that sweet. I, I, I see that it has teeth, you know. It, it, it has an underlying, some underlying sort of cruelty, you know. But you, you moved into what appears to be a completely different direction. Although I think there's a, there is an underlying sense that it's still you, very much so. I mean, really, when, when you look into the backstory of the main character and so on, it's, it's, it's not as sweetness and light as, as it would appear on the surface. But, but it's a children's I've tried. Musical, I've it? tried to make it a sweetness and light, but uh, it's, 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 it's it all comes out at the edges. You're doing a, a, a children's musical. Can you, can you say something about it? Well, um, the very first film I ever saw at the cinema, mm -hmm. I was taken by my grandmother to see The Sound of Music. Oh. And it was on back in the days where even quite small towns had big screens. Right. And I was about seven or eight, I imagine. And this experience of this massive screen and this music and uh, Julie Andrews was utterly overwhelming. And my grandmother took me home and I couldn't stop crying. And my parents were quite worried as to what had happened in the cinema and how I was. And I, and I couldn't talk because I was just crying too much. And, uh, and eventually I went to bed and I cried so much that when I woke up in the morning, I couldn't open my eyes because they had been sort of glued shut by my congealed tears. And, and really, that was the start of my entire interest in how this experience came to be. How did you make a film? How were, were, were the actors, there were cameras, and everything that I've ever done since has really been an exploration of how to how to make children cry all night, if you like. <laughs> um, and uh, and so I really and I miss that sort of uh, film. You know, we we don't have films when they say it's a cliche to say they don't make them like that anymore but actually they don't um even modern musicals uh you know when you think they've made les miserables as a film cats of course was not the greatest success mm. um there is no modern rogers and hammerstein and i thought in particularly in this time of uh, you know of covid i wonder whether we when we all come out whether we will still want to watch dark films uh, about sort of you know post apocalyptic worlds whether we've actually lived through that maybe we actually want to be transported to a slightly sort of nostalgic world of uh, where we can feel good about mm -hmm.
you have an idea how much children cost to raise? Do you think we'd be crazy enough to ever have another? So, so this is, was my idea, is would it be possible to, to do my own sort of homage to the, the traditional Hollywood musical? Uh, the, the slight twist being, let's do that in Thailand. Right. <laughs> so, so it will be quite strange. I'm sure it will be strange because, you know, the idea is it... it travels from the countryside of uh, either the north or the northeast of Thailand uh, through Thailand, eventually ending up in Bangkok. Um, and, and it's not Thai music. It's not even vaguely Thai music. It's, it's old-fashioned Broadway, Hollywood musical music, uh, which I think will be... It's, it's a grand experiment to see how that will work. I mean, of course, you have, again, been an inspiration very much um, in terms of, you know, I'm constantly, and I've always been since I first came to Thailand, uh, what is it now, uh, 21 years ago, I've constantly been uh, amazed by the level and depth of talent that exists here. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly in terms of when you make a film, uh, the crews, and and how fast, how efficient, how friendly, how helpful they are. You know, I would far rather make a film in Thailand with a Thai crew than than make a film in England where I came from. Uh, the atmosphere, the creativity, everything about it, I I find you know more appealing. Um, and to see what you know you've achieved with the Siam Sinfonietta, the which is a youth orchestra, and uh, you know, and the people you work with, I, you know, I think that there's enormous talent there that really deserves a. a, a you do it, uh, but uh, you know, I, I would love to do something as well to to as a canvas to be able to show not just Thailand, but to be able to show the world what, what Thailand can do. Um, because I see it, you know, every day, the amazing things that can be done here that, that most people outside Thailand don't realize.
Yeah, well, I do have a theory that, that where we are now is a sort of cosmic nexus of huge forces of creativity. And it's unknown. It, it's, it's sort of the secret center of the universe. I, I sort of feel this. And that's why I'm still here after <laughs> living in the States for so long. I, I came back for a brief visit, but I haven't gone back. Or except for except for other brief visits, you know, for, for 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 about twenty years now, so um, I think I think we have the same feeling about this, uh, really, uh, that there's a lot of magic here that's that, that's waiting to be sort of 
made public. Well, of course, there were, I mean, one could look back at various mm. places and times. Uh, you know, uh, Paris, when we had uh, toulouse lautrec right, and right. that whole era, and then there was a period, didn't everybody go off to Morocco? And there was, you know, been these various times. Maybe, yes. maybe Bangkok is the is the new Paris, the new Morocco. Yeah, you're you're right. You know, there was like Florence in the 15th century, and and Tangier when William Burroughs was wildly shooting his wife and this and that. <laughs> And, uh, yes, yes. And, uh, and th yeah, there was certain sort of loci that happened, and sporadically. It's it's not as simple as you know, every seventy six years it, it re <laughs> resurfaces somewhere. I wish it was, you know, but <laughs> but I think that we are sort of in such a place right now, and that's what excites what excites me about being here, and I I think excites you and, and many other artists. Well, the other thing is, I think it's always gratifying to feel that you are in an environment where one's efforts and labors stands a chance of making a difference. You know, if I was in Hollywood or in England, you know, you are part of such a great and sophisticated and experienced machine that you have very minimal chances of actually affecting that. Um, whereas I think, you know, to be in, in an area which is still growing and still evolving and still developing, um, it, it's a wonderful, you have a wonderful ability to feel that you actually may stand a chance of making a difference. Yeah, and actually to play a role in the evolution, not just passively observe it. I mean, I think that's, mm. that's the thing. Um, I mean, you're, you're, not, uh, you're not just here and say, saying, oh, it's so exciting. You're actually, you're actually where the excitement is. And I think yes. this is very, very true. Absolutely. So tell me, I mean, look, we've got uh, we no idea really what's going to happen uh, this year with COVID, with, uh, I mean, not all the theatres are still shut, all the concert right. halls, um, and we really have no idea when that's going to change, whether there's going to be a second wave, whether it's going to disappear. We could be back to normal in eight weeks' time. Or, I mean, you hear some uh, theatres in the UK, they were talking about no new productions maybe this year until 2021. I mean, that must be, I suppose, a chance for you to, to, to create and write and prepare new work. But it's also very frustrating, I'm sure, to, to not be doing what one wants to do, which is to be performing. and It's, it's nerve-wracking. Uh, not so much not being able to do it as not knowing when we're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. But at the moment, um, we have concerts that are actually scheduled for July. But whether they will actually happen is yes. a matter of some conjecture. Um, I hope so. Um, the, this, is, this year is the Sinfonietta's 10th anniversary. And we had a huge event planned in March, which the um, Ministry of Culture asked us to move, and they gave us a new date in July for this. Right. But that doesn't necessarily mean that 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 the hall will be available again. I mean, we. I mean, it, it's booked, but at the moment, yeah. all bets are off, really. So we just yeah. sit here, and um, I found that I'm, I'm doing much more work than I used to do, <laughs> you know, because uh, I've, I've been drawn back into writing novels, uh, and... Uh, I'm working on the tenth uh, life of the Buddha, which is a very tough one. Um, I, I mean, and as far as opera is concerned, and you, are, I'm sure, are going full tilt on grading your musical. <laughs> so, uh, and and uh, well, you you, know, so. you gave a wonderful address to young musicians in which you advocated, and everybody should watch it, that they should, you'll have to explain it, but that they should be butterflies and not zombies. <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, <laughs> I, I said that uh, 
we should think of this as not being buried alive, and, but we should think of it as going into a cocoon and, and undergoing a metamorphosis. I, I think that's uh, the only way we can get something it, out of this. And, and the thing is that it's the first time in probably centuries that the, or ever that the entire world is having a shared experience, if you think yes. about it. Well, before, before this century, there wasn't an entire world to share an experience, because there was no way that the whole world was interconnected yeah. in this way. So it's actually the first time that, that we're all in it together. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Let's just hope we all come out of it quickly. And together. <laughs> and together, yes. yes. <laughs> right. Well, well, it's very, been very nice dropping into your... Uh, your... Yes, the, the well two are all into overtime now. They're all getting very fed up over there. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I didn't know that the union had overtime in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me out. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, but, um, it is wonderful to see a well-lit uh, well house. Uh, it's, it's, it's you don't this, want to look the other way. It's there's there's soft, all sorts of chaos over there. It's got this sort of soft, sort of warm colors. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's really beautiful. Uh, oh. My 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 study is lit rather harshly, and it's it's your your exact opposite. It's all sort of blue and cold and and so on. <laughs> it, it's because I keep it. I'm naturally cold in this room because I'm worried that my computers will start overheating. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. But anyway, well, well, thanks so much. Uh, do you have any words of advice to give to people who are watching this uh, uh, about oh, uh, dealing with the crisis I'm with, or anything? I'm with the worst person to give advice. <clears throat> I've always. I've always rather resented all these, the standard thing that you're meant to say. Right. <clears throat> when asked to give advice to young people is you must always persist, you must always believe, you must never give up, and that if you constantly, you know, keep going, that you will be rewarded and it will all work out. Um, I think that's actually very bad and very unfair advice. Uh, and, and my advice would always be really to recognize when it's, when, when it's, it's, it's too hard a task and to give up and do something that you can be more successful at. I, 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 was, I, I was probably being rather long-winded anyway. My, my, my basic mantra and advice is that, it's, that there is absolutely no shame in giving up. And I urge everybody who faces these challenges and difficulties and finds it impossible that you should be quite proud and give up. Um, if, if you really cannot give up, if it pains you to your very soul that you couldn't even consider giving up, that regardless of whatever you face, however hopeless it is, that you will never give up, then, of course, you must ignore my advice. Uh, but, but if you can give up, you should do so. That's actually not dissimilar from advice I often give to people who uh, want to be writers um, or composers. Basically, I just say, don't. Don't do it. Because, I say, if you're really going to do it, you're not going to listen to me anyway. So if I tell you not to do it now, I'm going to save your life when, it, when that moment comes. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. So, so I, I think that's very true. Um, and I think that uh, a lot of people think that, that there's a trick to what we do, that all they have to do is learn this trick. But there isn't really, is there? You, you actually really have to do all the work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Unless you're Quen Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> he might be doing all the work, we just don't know it. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I think it's be one of, the, 
one of the more um, wide ranging sort of journeys into somebody else's house that, that I've had during this lockdown. So I'm just very glad I don't have to edit it. <laughs> Maybe I won't edit it. ผมได้รับคำสั่งจากกระทรวงศึกษาธิการให้มาบรรจุเป็นครูที่นี่ครับที่นี่กำลังจะตายก็ต้องทำให้พวกเธอตั้งใจเรียนเป็นเด็กดีฉันว่าเด็กๆเนี่ยคงมีวิธีแกล้งอดีตเด็กวัดอายุเท่าไหร่ชื่ออะไรโตขึ้นมาอยากเป็นอะไรพวกเราไปไหนแล้วค่ะท่านป่าทุกอย่างมันมีของมูหนิน้ำแล้วรู้สาเหตุไหมว่าทำไมถึงพูดไม่ได้จ๋าเขาเป็นคนแปลกๆถ้าไม่อยากกินก็เบ้ามีหลายคนนะไม่อยากให้เธอเรียนที่นี่ผมก็แค่ทำในสิ่งที่มันถูกต้องชายคนนี้แปลกเว้ยเฮ้ยกลับบ้านจุนมันไม่ผีอยู่นี้ต้องเห็นแต่เขาต้องเห็นเพื่อหัก